Hi everyone and welcome to the course. In this first lecture, I'm just going to show you how to use Google Meet in your classes. For those of you watching on YouTube, this video is actually part of a four hour course on Google Suite extensions and I'm currently giving a 50% discount on the course, so click on the link in the description if you'd like to watch it. So first of all, let's look at a few pros and cons of Google Meet. So Google Meet is free, but it's only free if you want to join meetings. If you're a teacher and you want to start a meeting, you need a premium account to start that meeting. Most schools at the moment, if they're teaching online, will probably have a premium Google Meet account. If they don't, you'll have to pay for it yourself, but it's not too expensive and it does come with a range of extensions and premium features that will really help your classroom. If you're using Google Meet with a lot of students, if you have big classes, all of your students need to have a Google account with the same domain that you're using as well. So again, if you're in a school and you have 30 students, all of them need to have the same domain name, which will probably be your school name. So if students can't get into the Google Meet, it's probably because they're using their personal email instead of their school email. If your students don't know how to use Google Meet, in the final section of this course, I've made some tutorial videos for your students, showing them how to use every extension that I'm going to talk about in this course. I've made them downloadable, and I've also made these videos available on YouTube, and I will put the links in a PDF, again, that will be in the final section of this course. So I give you free range to send them to your students so that they can watch the videos about how to use all these extensions that you're going to be using in your class, just to make it easier for you. Unfortunately, Google Meet doesn't have a built-in whiteboard like Zoom, for example, but there are a few extensions you can use like Jamboard and Zightboard, which I'll show you later on in this course. Google Meet has screen sharing options, which is really nice. So you can share Google Slides, you can share Jamboards, you can share anything important that you want your students to follow or to know. Uh, you can share your screen and they'll be able to see everything on your screen. Another really nice feature that Google Meet has that other communication tools don't is a live caption option, which is fantastic, especially if you have students with certain uh, issues with ability, uh, if they're hard of hearing, for example. Basically, when you speak, Google will create live captions for what you're saying and the student will be able to see it on the screen. I'll show you that in a second in the walkthrough. You can remove participants. So if you have anyone in the class that shouldn't be there or if you have a particularly aggressive student, you can take them out of the meet. And now finally, you can stop students from joining the meet when you're not there and from staying uh, too long after the class when you're not in there as well. This is thanks to the Google Classroom integration, which again, I'll show you in another lecture. Fortunately, there aren't any reactions in Google Meet like there is on Zoom, but you can download an extension called Nod, which I'll show you in a second in the walkthrough. And students will be able to raise their hand and ask questions without actually having to speak. So if you mute a student or all of the students in your class, you can't unmute them, but they can unmute themselves, which is incredibly frustrating. Hopefully, by the time this course gets to you, Google will have changed that, thanks to teacher feedback. But at the moment, students can unmute themselves if they like. And you can't mute all the participants either. You have to mute them one by one, which again, if you've got a big class, can be a bit annoying. You can, however, record the meeting. This is really nice. If any students have missed a lesson, you can put a link to the meeting in your Google Classroom and they'll be able to catch up on everything that they've missed. And another great thing you can do with Google Meet is take attendance. If you want to see who is in the lesson, if you need to contact parents to say that their kids have missed a lesson, you can do this with an extension in Google Meet as well, which I'll show you now. So let's take a look at the tool then. 
So Google Meet is just like any other app or extension. You can get to it by going up to your apps bar at the top here. Let's go ahead and click that. And then if you scroll down, you'll be able to find it here. So I'm just gonna click on that. So when you first click on it, if you have a premium G Suite account, you'll be able to join or start a meeting. If you don't have a premium account, you'll only be able to join a meeting. So if you're thinking of using Meet as a communication tool, you are gonna to have to pay for it if you want to start a meeting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this. And then if you want to start a meeting, you can either give it a name. So I'm just gonna say class one, or you can leave it blank if you want. Click join. And there we go, there I am. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mute my mic for a second. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a few of my dummy accounts. So this is a really important step if you're trying to figure out all of the extensions in Google Suite and how to use them in your classrooms. Make a dummy account for a student. So if you do this, this is really going to help you to see what your students see. So when you're planning lessons, you'll be able to figure out if what you're planning is going to work in the class. So to make a dummy account, just go back up to your normal Google main page and here where your profile is, click on it and you can go add another account. Now, just be wary that when you're adding an account, it has to be the same domain. So if you look up here, this is my domain, ispeakenglish.com and my dummy accounts are all at ispeakenglish.com. If they're not, they won't be able to join the meet and this goes for any meet. If your students are trying to join the meet with their personal email, it's not going to work. They need to have the same domain as you. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my dummy accounts. So I've got two here and I'm going to go back to my meet and I'm going to hit join now. Okay. So I'm in the meet. Now, if you want to give your students the meet code, you can, which is going to be this here. So they can just type this site into their browser and it will open the Meet. You don't even have to do this now because Meet has just integrated with Google Classroom, so you can do it straight from the classroom. If you don't have a classroom and you just have a few students but you want to use Meet, you need to give them this link. So I'm going to go up to my dummy accounts and I'm going to type this link into the browser. Okay, so this is my first dummy student. Now, be aware, if you're doing this with dummy accounts, you need to have your mic off. If you have it on, you're going to get a ton of interference and your computer's basically going to start screaming at you. So turn off your mic and then go ahead and do it on your other one. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off there. And now we're going to join the call. So let's hit join and I'm going to join on my other one. And then I'm going to go back to my original teacher one. And there you go. You can see that I've joined. So at the moment, I can just see the two people in my meet. If you have 30 people in your meet and you want to see everyone, if you want to say hello, you need to download an extension called Meet Grid View. And that will look like this extension up here. For any extension you want to download, just Google the name of the extension and it will come up straight away. So for example, if I put here, Google Meet Grid View extension, it's here. And I already have this installed, but this is the page you're gonna get for any extension you want to add in. Um, and then I can just go add to Chrome. Okay, so that's how you install Google Meet View. Now, if I wanna see everyone, I've got to turn on my Google Meet View. You can see here that it's off at the moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And then it's going to show three people in the meet, myself and my two students. There we go. Perfect. And then if I want, I can do it on all of them. Uh, I won't for now because it's going to get uh, a bit messy <laughs> if I do. So I'm just going to keep it here for now. And I just want to show you a few of the other features and extensions you can download for meet to make it a bit more useful in your lessons. So up here, you can see that I have a thumbs up uh, and I have a hands up button. 
Now, unlike Zoom, Meet doesn't actually have integrated reactions. You have to download a separate extension for that, which is Google Nod. And if you have Google Nod, it will look like this extension up here. So if you want your students to be able to use this, they have to download the extension as well. If they don't have the extension, they won't be able to react to anything. So make sure they download it. Once they have, they'll get this. So you can have a little thumbs up. Uh, if you're not sure about something, you can say, hmm. if you've got a question, you can raise your hand. So that's super useful. So go ahead. Same as before, just type in Google Nod extension and then download it from directly to your browser. If you have quite big classes, you're going to want to mute your students. It's a bit annoying with Google Meet. You can mute them, but only one by one. Uh, and I go up to my chat here. You can see that they're already muted. That's because I've muted myself because I don't want interference. Um, but if they weren't, you could click on that and mute them. The only thing is once you've muted them, you can't unmute them, but they can unmute themselves, which I think you'd agree if you have 30 students in a lesson is absolutely useless. Hopefully by the time this course gets to you, Google will have sorted that out and you'll be able to unmute them. But for now, there's nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. The only thing I would do to combat this is to put in some sort of reward system whereby if they unmute themselves or cause any problems in class, they'll lose points. Um, if they stay on task and they don't mute, unmute themselves, they'll gain points. That's the only thing you could do, really. If you look up here to this icon here, this is my attendance icon. So this is, again, another extension that you can download, and it's called Google Meet Attendance. If you download it and you have it active, it will look like this little apple here and you can turn it on. So this basically automatically takes attendance of any student in the lesson. And if you hit this button here, it will create a sheet for you, a Google sheet with all of the names, all of the timestamps when they entered the class and everything else. So if I go up to my Google Meet icon, I'll just show you some of the options you've got here. So you can right click to open your options box. Um, this one here means add a new sheet or create a new spreadsheet. So this toggle button here will turn Meet on and off. So depending on how big your class is, you might not need to take attendance. Uh, and then you can completely reset it as well. So if we go up to here and if you click on this, this will open uh, a new spreadsheet and you'll be able to see all the names of everyone in the meet, what time they joined, what time they left. And you can just keep that as a, a record for yourself. And then you can send out missing student forms or um, lack of attendance forms or anything like that to your students' parents. Uh, another good thing about Google Meet is that you can remove students. If you have a student who's not supposed to be there or possibly if a student's getting a bit aggressive, you can remove them from the Meet. So all you have to do is go over here to your chat box on people, click on whoever you want to remove, and here you can remove them. So let's just take that person out. Okay, there we go. They're gone. There's only two of us left now. And another thing you can do is that you can pin people to the top. So you can move people up or down, uh, depending on maybe, again, if you've got a, a student who needs quite a bit of attention, you can put them to the top so that you don't have to scroll up and down finding your students. So I'm just going to remove my other student now because there's a feature I want to show you and I need my mic on to do it. So I don't want any interference. So I'm just going to go remove. Okay, and that's just me. So a really nice feature that Google Meet has that Skype and Zoom and other communications don't have, as far as I know, is a captions tool, which is fantastic, especially if you have students who have certain accommodations who may be hard of hearing um, and also just for connection problems in general. So what this does then, if I untap my mic, if I unmute myself and I go over here to turn on captions, this will write everything that I say on the screen and then you can see it, your students can see it, and it just makes accessibility a bit better. 
Obviously, it's not going to be completely accurate. Up here, you can say it said chickens. I don't know what I actually said. I can't remember. So if you do have students with certain accessibility issues, maybe speak a bit slower, a bit clearer, so it can pick up everything you're saying. If you have quite a strong accent, it might not work that well. OK, so let's just turn that off then. Uh, and one more thing you can do with Google Meet is you can share your screen which is down here. So if you go present now, you can share your entire screen. So if you have a presentation that you want to show them, you can share it and then you'll be able to see your students uh, on the right hand side, or you can share just a window. Be mindful if you share just a window and you need to flick back to something, your students aren't going to be able to see it. They'll only be able to see that one window that you share. If you want to be flicking back and forth between different documents to show them different things, you need to share your entire screen and then they'll be able to see everything. OK, and that's all for Google Meet. So join me in the next lecture where I'll be showing you how to set up a Google Meet directly from Google Classroom. I'll see you there. And don't forget to claim your 50% discount by clicking the link below.